Hello and welcome to Money Girl, a podcast that helps you master your money so you can live rich and love the journey. I'm Laura Adams, a personal finance expert and author based in Silicon Valley. You can learn more about me at lauradadams.com. There's also a contact page that you can use to send me a money question. I do get a lot of emails, so I can't guarantee that I can personally answer every question, but there's a good chance that I might be able to use it in a future show. And today's show is about a topic that's really important. It's how to become rich. And as you probably know, it doesn't happen overnight. Well, unless you win the lottery or have a huge inheritance coming, building wealth happens gradually over time. Financially successful people always have a plan for building and maintaining their wealth. No matter if your personal finances and career are just a wreck right now or you're flying high, it's important to be very clear about the direction you want to go. So in this podcast, I'll cover five strategic questions that you must answer in order to get a grasp on your current situation and take your personal finances to the next level. How you answer the questions will identify what's missing in your financial life, where you want to go, and who you need to leverage for help. I'm going to be giving you lots of resources, but don't worry, you don't have to take notes because I always post the transcript for each podcast in the Money Girl section at quickanddirtytips.com. Just look for this episode. It's number 442 called Five Questions to Help You Get Rich. And the Money Girl section is also where you'll find the full archive of podcasts that predate what's available currently in iTunes or any other audio app that you may be using. I recently mentioned that the show is now on Spotify's mobile app, so I'm really excited about that. Some people have had trouble finding it. Spotify does have more than music on the mobile app, not on desktop. So just keep digging. It's there. So let's get started with the first question that you need to answer to get rich. The first is, do I have a positive money mindset? Your money mindset is simply how you think about money and relate to it. Our mindset is key because it's the precursor to our behavior. None of your actions or behaviors happen in a vacuum. They always spring from your thoughts first or your mindset. So I want you to be real with yourself and own up to whether your thoughts about money support you by moving you in a positive direction every day or are holding you back and sabotaging your ability to get ahead. So for instance, if you think that you're at a disadvantage because you started learning about money late in life, maybe you didn't go to college or you don't have the career that you really, really want, it's time to leave those negative, false beliefs in the dust. It doesn't matter if you're working an entry-level job or are a highly paid CEO, your money mindset is the key to whether you build lasting wealth or not. Your ability to grow rich does not depend on your education or even your earning power. Smart, powerful people can fail miserably with their money when they don't follow the basics like living below your means, having enough of the right kinds of insurance, and investing for the future. I've seen this over and over. And you probably have too. You've heard about rap stars and fashion models who end up bankrupt even though they made millions every year. They simply mismanage their money. The reality is that anyone can wind up poor no matter how much money flows in and out of their bank account. Likewise, anyone can end up wealthy if they have the right mindset and consistently save and invest small amounts of money. That's all it takes. Having a healthy money mindset means that you have clarity about what you're supposed to be doing with your money and you actually do it. So that leads us into the second question that I want you to ask yourself, which is, do I have the right financial focus? So this is about whether you know your priorities or your values and you're managing money in alignment with them. Values are standards of behavior or principles that you believe in deeply, and they're different for all of us. It could be being independent, having close relationships, pursuing optimal health, or giving your kids a financial head start in life. One way to test whether your finances fit with your personal values is to look at your checkbook or your budget if you have one. How you spend money speaks for itself because it clearly shows what you really value. 
The benefit of staying focused on values is that they give you deep inspiration and motivation to make new and maybe difficult choices with your money, like boosting contributions to your retirement account, building an emergency fund, or sticking to a spending plan. In order to know what you're supposed to be doing with your money, you have to get clear about what the end goal is for you. Everyone's ideal financial future is different. You may want to live simply for decades and then retire early. Or you might dream of buying a big house, starting a business, or moving to a big city. Once you're clear about your values, you should create specific goals. For example, if you value education, You might create a goal to save $30,000 for your child's college education. Then calculate how much you need to invest over what period of time to achieve that goal. Question number three, do I use the best financial tools? Taking advantage of the right financial tools and products like retirement accounts, insurance, health savings accounts, and credit cards gives you a big leg up on becoming rich. There's a wide range of options, and often we get lazy about doing research and shopping around for the best deals. So if you carry a credit card balance from month to month, do a search on creditcards.com for low-interest cards that would cut your monthly rates. If you want to pay off credit card balances for good, wipe them out with a less expensive, low-rate personal loan, and I've done other podcasts about that. You can shop sites like Prosper, Lending Club, SoFi, and Payoff for the best rates and terms. And again, I'm putting links to all these resources that I'm going to be giving you on the Money Girl page at quickanddirtytips.com. If you own a home with a mortgage, contact different lenders such as Quicken Loans or USAA to discuss whether refinancing makes sense for your situation. In many cases, refinancing is an easy way to get out of debt much faster. And if you still have a 401k with an old employer, do a tax-free rollover into an IRA at sites like Betterment, Future Advisor, or Scott Trade for more control over your money. Remember that cashing it out is a bad idea after you leave a job because you'll be on the hook for income tax and a 10% early withdrawal penalty if you're younger than age 59 and a half. So I always recommend that you move those old 401ks into an IRA. And don't forget to have an annual meeting with your insurance agent to discuss money-saving options that will still give you plenty of protection. You can easily shop for policy rates at sites like insurancequotes.com and USAA. The fourth question is, do I stick to a smart plan? This is really important because you've got to follow a plan for your money. If you're living paycheck to paycheck, that's a sure sign that you need to create and stick to a spending plan. And if you're not investing for retirement, I can't stress enough how important it is to participate in your workplace retirement plan. Not only do you save for the future, but you get some terrific tax breaks and perhaps free matching funds from your employer. When you have a job that does not offer a retirement plan, or maybe if you're self-employed, open up an IRA and set up automatic monthly contributions. There are certainly other actions you need to take on a weekly, monthly, or yearly basis, like paying bills on time, reconciling account statements, reviewing your bank and credit card transactions, monitoring your net worth, and checking your credit report. I give you a list of the most important money management tasks and when to accomplish them in Chapter 4 of my book, Money Girl Smart Moves to Grow Rich. And the last question to ask yourself to become rich is, do I leverage the right professionals? This is important because there are a host of pros, such as financial planners, tax accountants, and attorneys who help people every day with issues that you might be struggling with right now. If you need help with the big picture of your finances, like setting goals, knowing what your priorities should be, navigating through a complex situation, or maybe you just need to stay accountable to someone, make an appointment to work with a financial planner. For instance, if you want to get all the tax benefits you're entitled to, hire a tax accountant. If you don't have an insurance agent who's willing to answer your questions, find a better one. Take advantage of advisors to pick investments as well. Many workplace retirement plans and IRAs offer them for free. 
Working with the right experts can help you make huge leaps forward with your money as quickly as possible. And if you're not sure how to find the right expert, use a site like Wealthminder that matches you with different types of advisors that fit your needs. How you answer these five questions about mindset, focus, tools, actions, and professionals should help you identify how to fill voids in your financial life and take your money management to the next level. If you feel overwhelmed, just start with the area of your finances that concerns you the most. For instance, if you're worried about losing your job because you don't have a financial cushion to fall back on, build an emergency fund as quickly as possible. Wealthy people don't get bogged down with the mistakes they may have made in the past. They stay focused on the future. Becoming rich is the result of having clear goals, making financial sacrifices when needed, and continually tracking your progress to stay on course. I want to thank you for downloading the show and being part of the Money Girl community. If you're getting value from the show, I want to ask a favor. Please subscribe to the show and take a moment to submit a five-star review. iTunes is still the most popular way new listeners find the show, so your reviews on that platform are great because they really help us stay visible there. But you can also get and review the show on other apps such as Stitcher, and SoundCloud. And as I mentioned, Money Girl is even available on Spotify's mobile app. So I will thank you in advance for taking the time to submit a quick review wherever you get the show. It would really mean a lot to me. That's all for now. I'll talk to you next week, courtesy of Money Girl, your guide to a richer life. (laughs) 